All right, so in our next step for inventory item, we now need to actually use your data. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's actually not too difficult. All we can do or need to do is add our data. Now, I'm going to export it, and there is actually a reason we do this, which you'll see in about 10, 15 minutes. But essentially, this is going to allow us to use this item in two ways. We're going to be able to use this and create it using code, but we'll also be able to use it and create it using a real node. Now, what I mean by this is that instead, first of all, instead of extending my control, we're going to extend a uh, texture. I can't spell today, apparently. Text uh, rect. There we go. So this is a texture rectangle. Essentially, it's a extension of controlled node, actually, that shows a picture. Essentially, that's all it is. So it's very similar to a sprite, but it also has the capabilities of a control node. Now we're going to make this also a class name. We call this inventory item. So this is an inventory item class, its own node that extends texture rectangle that we will also be able to create data. And what does this mean? Well, it actually means that inside of our grid, I can now search up inventory item. And you can see it's a child of the texture rectangle. And if I add this, you can even see the data on the top right. And what is in this data? Well, uh, if we go to resource, which we just created, and we go to the tomato and pop this in, there we go. That is pretty much it. That is our data. Right? Now we're going to do this through code, so we're not going to do this manually by adding them all. We're going to do this through code a little bit. But before we do that, we're going to have to, well, make some functionality in this guy, right? So what do we need to do? Well, first, we'll have something in a ready function. In our ready function, we're going to check to first see if data is valid. The reason we do this is because these items uh, will sometimes not have data in them. Now, if this does happen, that's probably not supposed to happen. And so you can add something to an else statement that allows you to debug it or something like that. But at the moment, all we can do or need to do is add an if statement that will allow us to just check and avoid the problem. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the Z index of this item to two. So this way, the item shows above all the other things, specifically in front of like, let's say the slot, right? So if I add a picture of a slot, I want the item itself to show in front of the slot. Next, what I'm going to do is just add a few other things that will essentially allow me to use this item in the way I want it. So I'm going to use the expand mode on uh, expand ignore size. The stretch mode, I'm going to set that to stretch keep aspect centered. And then the texture, we're going to set that to the data dot item texture. Now, if you remember in the item uh, inventory data, the item texture is right here. So the item texture of the data, we're going to set that to the texture of self, essentially. So this is essentially the same as saying self dot texture. So we're just going to say texture, though. Next up, I'm going to uh, describe or change the description or the tooltip text. So tooltip is a very cool thing, which I'll show you in just a second. But essentially, I'm going to add percent %s and percent %s with a new line in between, whoops, and set the item name and then the data description. So this will just add the name of the item and then a description of that data, right? So this is the description that we added from our tomato and the item name, so tomato, right? Okay, going back to the script. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this item or this data is stackable. If it is stackable, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a label and pop this label on top of our item. Now, this is a real object, right? This is a real node that we're going to make. So label.new is going to create this object. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to set the label.text to data.count. Now, we have to convert the count, though, to a string. And we do this very easily by just saying str and then put the number essentially inside of that. And the number is the data.count. Next, I'm going to just set the position of the label to 24 and 16. Now, this is what I found to be a good position for this text. Now you can maybe change this up if you don't like it or if it looks weird to you or whatever. And then lastly, we need to add the child. We need to create the label. Right? So here we created the label. And now here we actually add the child or the, the label to the scene. All right. Next up, we need to now initialize the data using 
essentially the item data being passed through. Now this is going to allow us to set this data. And so here, this is where I will say data equal D. So D is the thing that's being passed through. And then data is over here being saved locally, essentially. All right. Next up, after we've initialized this node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two built in custom functions. One is going to be get drag data. And the second one is going to be an extension essentially off of this one, which is make drag preview. Now this node or uh, sorry, this one will return control, which we're going to do in just a second. And this one will control variant. Now in the first one, it's actually pretty easy. This is going to use, use an extension, another built in function called set drag preview. And inside of this, we're going to call or pass through this function over here, make drag preview at this position. So essentially, at position is being passed through the moment I already am dragging this item. Essentially, it's a built in function that automatically gets called. It uses the position at whatever position it's at. And then we're going to make the drag preview or we're going to pass out pass this guy through our own uh, custom function and do some things in here. Now the question is, well, what do we do in here? Well, we're going to do what this function says. We're going to make a preview or a kind of image of the item that's being dragged. Now, the way we'll do this is we're going to create a texture rectangle first. So essentially, we're going to create this guy again, right? So its own self, essentially, almost. And then, uh, sorry, I almost forgot. We need to return self over here. So in this function, we need to make sure we've returned self because it's trying to return a variant. Okay, let's continue again. So over here, we're going to now set a few things in our texture uh, new, right? The new texture that we just created, we're going to set some things in it. And the first thing we'll set is the texture of it. So the texture of that preview item, well, I want to set it to itself, obviously, because if I'm dragging an item, I want to show that I'm dragging that item. And I can do that by simply saying that p.texture is equal to texture, right? Now I'm going to do very similar things that I did over here on the very top. I'm going to set the expand mode and the t stretch mode to texture stretch and ignore. Next up, I'm going to set the custom minimum size to the self dot size. And lastly, I'm going to set the modulate dot a. So this is essentially the invisibility of its item. And we're going to set its invisibility almost to half. So it looks slightly invisible. All right, lastly, is we're going to set the position of that item or the, the texture to its vector two at its own position, but in the negative. So this will allow me to actually follow my mouse. And if you've actually tried the positive, well, I'm going to actually let you test that and see what happens if you try positive. So give that a try. Obviously, we have to finish these functions. So let's finish them up. Now, the next thing we're going to do, though, because we're supposed to return control, I'm going to create a control node, add the child to that control node. And then lastly, all I need to do is return C, which is that control node that I just created. And that's it. So that is my inventory item. Now, in the next part, we're going to finish the inventory slot, and then we'll finally go into actually creating our items and slots uh, through our main.gd, which is attached to our inventory script over here, if you recall. So it might have been a few minutes or a while, but that is where that inventory main.gd resides. And so that's what we'll get into in a few parts. But first, we need to continue and complete the inventory slot.